Hi everyone, so it hasn't been long since AI video burst onto the scene. Really, we can count it in months. And for the most part, the scene has been dominated by Runways Gen 2. I know a lot of you have had issues with the pricing structure to output ratio of Gen 2. So I am happy to say that a few alternatives have arrived on the scene. Today, I'm taking you into Pika Art, a new text to video generator that produces some remarkable results. We're gonna take a look at some videos I made with it, some outstanding user creations and I'll take you into prompting and commands to give you a head start when you jump in. So the video I put together, it's a little rough around the edges. It's loosely based off of an old graphic novel that I really loved called Zombies vs. Robots by Ashley Wood. It's pretty much what it sounds like and it is fantastic. So dim your lights and phones on silent for 45 seconds of AI madness. Pretty crazy, right? So I think that Pika's real standout feature in its model is the amount of fluid movement that it has. The videos it generates have a lot of dynamic movement to it, far more than Gen 2. For example, this shot, which had a very simple prompt of zombie horde in a dystopian city in Pika, obviously has a ton of movement to it. Whereas running the same prompt in Gen 2 gives us a nice result, but it's very sort of static. It feels very much just like a still image that's kind of lightly parallaxing. Granted, all of that movement does come at the cost of overall stability. Um, taking a shot like this where the robots are jumping, you can kind of see here that his leg just kind of vanishes. Um, there's a weird twist that he does here, which I actually think is really cool, uh, but doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm actually willing to accept it as a stylistic thing because the action is so dynamic. It's almost got that Michael Bay Transformers thing where none of the robots actually make sense, but everything is moving so quickly that your eye doesn't have time to tell your brain, hey, this doesn't make sense. So your brain is just like, whatever, we'll just roll with it. Also in the case of this video, I think it kind of works considering the original source material is so heavily stylized in its illustration. Now you can tone down that level of dynamic movement and we'll take a look at that in a little bit, but I will say that Pika generates a pretty good amount of variations in terms of its movement and camera, which is very handy when you're cutting something like this together to create that left to right, right to left movement. Uh, for example, in this shot where we have our female combatant and she turns and looks to the right and then that's easily matched with our zombie now looking to the left. Pika, like most AI generators, excels at creating super surreal things. For example, this is clowns in a grocery store in 1980. Um, yeah, that's super, super surreal. Uh, I decided to follow that up with mimes in a supermarket. And then of course, once I had both of them, I decided to have them fight. Um, yeah, the coherency gets completely out of whack here and it becomes totally surreal, but it's also kind of hypnotizing to look at as well. One interesting note about this clowns footage. So I did prompt supermarket 1980 and we did end up getting sort of like this very vintage um, film stock looking supermarket. It does lead me to believe that Pika has probably been trained on a library of like vintage public domain stock footage. But I think if you lean into that surrealness, you can get some pretty stellar results. For example, this is the simple prompt of a Dali painting come to life. And we have these kind of crazy hypnotic images. Yeah, these are really cool. I did want to check. Um, I think... Yeah, the fingers actually aren't are weird. Well, no, that's that's some pretty wacky AI fingers there. Or something like the Door Brothers did, where they took a Van Gogh animated prompt and generated a short film out of it. Uh, this is actually super fantastic and has a really cool twist ending. I don't want to spoil it. You can check out the full version at the link below. I also played around with some Miyazaki prompts, which gave us this. It's not quite Miyazaki, but it definitely has that 
like late 80s anime feel to it. So it definitely knew who I was calling out. So let's go take a look at generating and prompting in Pika. So it is Discord based and we're very early in. So there aren't a lot of commands to kind of play around with. In fact, it's actually as simple as forward slash create. Prompting does work pretty simply. Uh, for example, this is one from the community feed, uh, cinematic ancient Rome, a Roman army marching, and we get this. Um, so there's no need for like 8K octane render and all of the other various sort of stable diffusion type prompts. Someone else posted this. This is actually the best AI generated car video I think I've seen yet. Here's a really interesting one. So you can see in the prompt here that it was called out that the restaurant was going to be Happy Hamburgers. And if you look in the video, it actually has kind of close to spelling it correctly, um, at least as close as, you know, say Mid Journey gets. Um, so yeah, that's pretty impressive. There aren't a ton of perimeter controls happening in Pika right now, which I got to admit is actually kind of relieving. We do have some like the ability to change the guidance scale and negative prompt. Negative prompting we're going to take a look at in one second as well. Uh, you can also change your aspect ratio from 16.9 to 9.6 and control the amount of motion in the outputted video, which when you start cranking that up, things do start to fall apart a little bit. So that's one that you got to use very carefully. The devs have mentioned that things like image prompting will be coming soon. Um, in the meantime, I did want to take you through negative prompting very briefly. So with a prompt of 1970s Kung Fu fight scene, uh, we end up with something like this. It's a little bit on the janky side. It looks really cool, but yeah, it's a little bit on the watery noodly side. But by adding in a negative prompt, uh, sort of a standard stable diffusion one of like ugly, duplicate, morbid, mutilated, out of frame, extra fingers, yada, yada, yada. Um, that does seem to have a pretty good effect on the output. Um, now granted the output here decided to turn into like a karaoke scene, but I do think that just generally goes to show that currently you're gonna have to generate a lot to kind of find things that work. I'll say Pika is very early in. I've been there for a couple of days now and it does seem like we're all sort of flying by the seat of our pants. There isn't a ton of documentation and we're all just sort of figuring it out as we go along. But there's this thing that people keep saying when it comes to AI video and filmmaking and that's, well, we're just not quite there yet. But at this point, I really have to ask, where is there? I mean, yeah, we're not at the AI version of Citizen Kane yet, but I do feel with something like Pika, we've at least jumped up to, you know, Boonwell's like Unche Andalou, or maybe George Malay's Trip to the Moon. I just think that there is no there. You can make weird, wonderful, wacky, zany movies right now. My current working method is just to open up Premiere start generating videos and laying them in one by one. That's something that's never been possible in the history of filmmaking. I am literally writing, producing, shooting, and editing all simultaneously. So I don't know where there is, but I can say that here is pretty amazing. Uh, Pika is in beta right now. You can sign up at the link below, and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Tim.